to talk to the American School in Brazil. I was there personally in November of 2016, uh, and I, very, I remember very fondly visiting the school and the campus and having lunch in the cafeteria uh, and talking to the, to the students at the gym, in the gymnasium. So uh, thank you very much for calling me today. Pedro, the coronavirus has, has definitely affected how we uh, uh, astronauts prepare for space. We have to maintain a safe, safe uh, distance with protection with a mask. And, uh, and in the months, in the two months before launch, crew members go into quarantine or more, more strict re, re, uh, uh, protocols. And the last uh, three weeks is very strict quarantine. Over. Hi, Lorena. So we have uh, three different exercise devices a treadmill, a bicycle, and a weightlifting machine. The weightlifting machine is actually uh, air resistance in a, in a, a vac vacuum cylinder that we can adjust the piston up and down and provide the resistance and we can uh, move the, the bar to accommodate leg exercises or, or upper body exercises and that's how we keep our bones nice and strong. It's, it's nice that we get uh, our muscles toned, but really it's our bone health that we care a great deal about. Uh, from this exercise. Over. So, George, thanks for the question. When I was a child, I, I liked sports a great deal, and I, I was uh, in, had to be looking for playing sports being a referee in some kind of uh, sporting event. I liked basketball a great deal. But as I grew older, I became more interested in, in uh, math and science, and, uh, and then ultimately an engineering degree in graduate school. And as I was learning all these um, academic things, I realized that being an astronaut is something that anybody can apply to do and, and fill out the, the, the packet to become one. So that's what motivated me as I, as I grew, grew more interest in science and, and technology. Over. Well, we, we, um, we do follow the news and we follow sports. We, we can uh, occasionally get on the Internet, but we have uh, news, daily news and daily sports broadcasts uh, recorded and sent up to us. So this is how we follow along, especially when there's big, big sporting events going on. Although at this particular uh, time and space for me, it's marked by the coronavirus pandemic, and so there's not much sports going on in the world. My favorite fo American football team are the New England Patriots, and uh, I, I, I haven't quite got a soccer uh, favorite team quite yet. Over. Right, this nice question. So since becoming an astronaut, the, the first m memorable moment was the, the moment I received a phone call to tell me that I was chosen to become an astronaut. That was an amazing and a life-changing phone call. The second moment uh, that I really sticks with me is when I was called by the, the chief astronaut to tell me that I was going to be on uh, my first mission. And that was a, big, a year and a half of training to launch on the space shuttle. And my third amazing moment was the moment when I first saw outside the hatch on my very first spacewalk. Over. Elena, that's an easy one for us because we very much know our goals. Our goal is to get uh, humans on Mars. Uh, we will very likely take a, a intermediate step and return people to the moon sometime in the next uh, handful of years uh, as we sort that out. But by the time you are an astronaut, Elena, I think we will have people going to Mars. Over.
Santiago, inside the space station, it, it sounds a lot uh, the same as what you're used to. Uh, we have a lot of background noises, fans, machinery noises, and pumps. Uh, so it's a little bit noisy inside the space station. Outside the space station, it's a vacuum of, of space, and the sound does not tra propagate through the vacuum. So there's really nothing to hear uh, out, out there. Uh, over. On the International Space Station, we've been very fortunate that we haven't had too many serious accidents, although one that I'm very familiar with was during a spacewalk seven years ago. I was with uh, an Italian astronaut named Luca Parmitano when his spacesuit malfunctioned and water was flowing into his helmet and filling up the inside volume of his helmet. Uh, we had to hurry up and get back in to get his helmet off. Over. When we get on the launch pad, it, we understand that there's a, a giant uh, chemical reaction that's about to happen underneath us and launch us to space. You feel, you don't feel the velocity, you feel the acceleration. So it's during this eight and a half minutes where the rocket is, is accelerating you and pushing you faster and faster that you, you feel pushed to the back of your seat. Do, are we scared? I wouldn't say we're scared because we, we have a great deal of training and preparation and we know that there's backup systems for different, all the types of failures that we can think of at least. So uh, we have a healthy appreciation for what's happening on the launch day, over. Madeline, when we get back to Earth after being gone for all this time, uh, it, our bodies have definitely have to get used to it. It takes several days to feel semi-normal, and it takes several weeks, probably like...